Hey YouTube, Dan from Southhawk Computing, and on this episode we're going to be reviewing another car DVR camera, and that's coming up next. Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Dan from Southhawk Computing, and today we're going to be reviewing another car DVR. This one's a little bit different from the ones that we've seen before. It actually has a smaller display as well. So let's get right to the unboxing and see what we got here. Okay, so we have everything unboxed. We have the very useless directions as always. It doesn't tell us much other than what the resolutions and the actual specifications of the camera are. So as always, adios. We have the USB cord for hooking it up. We have the camera itself. Definitely smaller and actually very, very light in comparison to the other ones that we reviewed. I mean, the other ones are light, but I'm saying that this one here is by far the lightest suction cup and obviously USB power cigarette light adapter. So we're gonna plug it into USB real quick and take a look at the menus. Before we do that, I just wanna say we'll be using this time some G-Skill 32 gig micro SD card for the testing. And let's hook it up. Okay, so right off the bat, it immediately starts recording, so let's see if we could uh, get the stop. Alright, good. And let's see here. That looks like a toggle up and down, menu. That's probably commit to menu uh, memory if you get into an accident or something, but let's hit this guy here. Ah, so this is definitely different software, so now this is actually going to make me very curious here. By default, it seems like it's going to 720p. Let's see if, uh... oh, I see. So that's for menu settings, I got it. So that selects it up and down. And then I'm assuming this is gonna be the okay button. Yep, all right. So 720p, 1080, and VGA are our options. Keep it on 720. Timestamp is on. Motion detect is off. Video time. Oh, okay, so it, on this setting here, it does the increments uh, in three minutes. Record uh, the voice, so in other words, microphone on and off. Uh, let's go to the second menu here, so format, next menu, language is English, auto off is off. Light frequency, 50 hertz, input, oh, date input, okay. USB, oh I see, how you want it to uh, behave when it hooks up directly to a computer if you want it to be a PC camera or show up as a disk drive. So obviously I want disk drive. All right, so pretty much a basic setup here. Obviously everything looks a little different. Oh, so this M here is for the, the modes, excellent. Okay, so that sums up the menus. Let's go ahead and do some field testing here and see what we get for image quality. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so this is the camera in its 720p setting. Uh, obviously this is a daytime shot, me just driving around town. The date and time stamp pretty much monopolizes a good portion of the screen. That's uh, pretty funny right there, but quality wise, uh, I'm going to have to say that it's uh, kind of on the low end scale in comparison to the other DVR cameras that we reviewed. Not as bad as the R300, slightly above it, but there's other car DVR cameras that we reviewed that the camera quality is definitely better. So now for our 720p nighttime shot here we could actually see a lot of the environment. It's actually one of the best nighttime views that we've gotten in a long time out of any of these cameras, as a matter of fact. I was kind of impressed that we were able to see as much as we could, regardless if the quote-unquote nighttime mode was on. Nighttime mode, like all these cheap little cameras, 
didn't make re a real difference here. But as you can see, as we're driving around, we actually could see a lot more of the environment, which is actually a plus for this particular camera. So let's start the final wrap up here. Before we continue, just wanted to say the 32 gig G skill memory that we did our initial testing with completely malfunctioned on us. So we have to replace it with a 16 gig Patriot SD card. And that seemed to actually work for the entire duration of our testing of this unit here. So let's start with the positives for this uh, particular model. I'm gonna have to give it marks for its sleek design it's nice, it's very compact, it's not intrusive as far as uh, odd shapes and whatnot, so it gets high marks for that. The GUI that or graphical user interface that came with this one is actually one of the better ones that we had in the lab for testing. Not saying the other ones were bad, but the actual detail in the icons and as well as the menus, it just gives it the extra step. It gives me a feeling that I'm dealing with a better type of quality product because they actually took the time to make the graphical user interface that much better. Next up, it's got the ball and socket mount, which is great. It's uh, 100 times easier to aim it into position. And I happen to prefer these over the other ones that are just gear based. It's just that much easier to center it on your windshield and get a good view for recording there. Nighttime capture on this particular camera is actually one of the better ones, believe it or not. It's kind of surprised even though the video quality wasn't that best, but when you see the footage from the nighttime shot there, you could actually see what's going on in front of you, which is great. And by far, this is also the cheapest car DVR that we reviewed. At the time of purchase, it was about $18 and that included shipping. How about the bad for this particular product? Well, to, for starters here, it really doesn't have a fish lens like all the typical car DVRs. It simply means you're just gonna have a decreased viewing angle when recording. You're able to see a lot more in comparison with the other cameras. So that's one thing I didn't like. In order to get a proper view of recording, I almost had to put it on an upward angle, such as this, kind of like that, in order to get a proper view of what was in front of me, as well as traffic lights, because it's kind of important, especially when it's during the time of an accident, being able to see traffic lights and whatnot. Unfortunately, for this testing unit, the microphone did not work. Apparently, uh, no matter what I did, have to get the microphone functioning, this camera would just not record any audio. So unfortunately, it's going to get bad marks for that. And lastly, this is not even a 720p uh, capture sensor for this camera. I tried multiple settings. The 1080p just made it worse. The 720p wasn't even close to what it was supposed to do. There's a lower resolution, but honestly, 720p, you have to hit that mark because that's just unacceptable. So what's the final verdict on this? Well, do we toss it or buy it? Honestly, it almost got that toss it rating. That poor image quality almost wanted me to completely forget about doing a review on this camera. But if you reduce the size of the video screen, you could get a better view of what you're seeing on your recordings. That being said, what also helped save this camera was its nighttime vision. Granted, the nighttime button that activates the LEDs did absolutely nothing like all these cheap car DVR cameras. It helped persuade me like this camera just enough so I wouldn't get the toss it rating. So, if you're not too concerned with quality and you like the fact that it can get you night vision and you just want a basic car DVR, then this one's definitely for you. If you like what you see here, obviously leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, do all that great stuff, it'll be greatly appreciated. This is Dan from Southall Computing, and as always, until the next time.